What is up, homies? Welcome back to another episode of the Chexicans Podcast on the Chexicans channel. Eventually, I'm going to load sounds into this. I, you know what? I have ah. them and they're not working. Oh, yeah, you oh. did load sounds. I tried into to load yeah, a bunch of sounds. Reason, they don't work. Okay, there, there you we go. go. Yeah, maybe don't press all the buttons. Then, I guess. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's huh. going to be funny. Huh. You know, you know how new shit. technology works. Yeah. When you press yeah. all the buttons, it stops. That's, uh, it just crashes everything. <laughs> That's a new thing. That's never the ever happened before. self-destruct button. Yeah. 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 That's, that'll do it. <laughs> I guess I chose to accept this uh, mission, yeah. apparently. <laughs> yeah. uh, welcome back. Uh, we have been on, a, obviously, a little bit of a hiatus. Yep. I just this, got back from a trip. Yeah, you just got back from a trip. You both did. I just got back from a trip. You were in Portland. You were in Japan. I had COVID. So, you know, we all had the vacation mm -hmm. Crazy. it was the worst but it was also while we were uh, uh, taking a break from i guess heroes reforged stuff mm -hmm. the strike was still going yeah, yeah. it's not like we going. were releasing yeah. content but thankfully we did watch the first four episodes of loki like <clears throat> a month and a half ago yeah, yeah. we did like a long time ago so a we week had before those, it premiered yeah. yeah we had them banked and uh and then when as soon as i got back we did we knocked out five mm, and six uh -huh. and watched those. So mm -hmm. this episode, we're, I guess we're, we we can talk about the finale totally. for that. So yeah. uh -huh. that. we've all seen the Marvels. We have. So we can in talk about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you seen three D? Absolutely. That's a fun time. Yeah. Uh, the three D is always f anything in space. Anytime I'm watching a three D movie and there's a space shot, I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah, I'm like that's what it's for. <laughs> that's what it's for. That's what it's for. That's what it's for. Three D exists only for space shots. <laughs> uh, so we can talk about that mm -hmm. a little bit, and then some other stuff. But yeah, that's 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 our status. Yeah, check. I want to talk to you guys about something that's grinding my gears. Uh -huh. uh, but we can we can get to that in a yeah. little bit okay. longer. I, I'm I'm my gears are slightly grinding because, like you mentioned, the strike is officially over. Yeah, mm -hmm. but now. I think a lot of people are getting a closer look at the new SAG after contract. Yeah. Mm. And a lot of people are rightfully upset mm -hmm. and not super happy with a lot of the stuff pertaining to AI. Yeah. A lot of the clauses in there, it doesn't feel super protected right now. It mm -hmm. seems like there's mm -hmm. still a lot of gray area yeah. where studios and the executives and that whole machine can still take advantage of artists. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how like tone deaf. Oh, right. Certain things can be like right. literally this morning, there was a post saying that um, I think it was, I want to say it was Warner Brothers music. I could be wrong. I think you're right. But it's one of these like, uh, it's one of these mu uh, record labels connected to a major studio that's basically coming out and saying, we want to do an edit Piaf biopic, uh -huh. but we want to use through AI her voice and her <laughs> likeness to create the movie. <laughs> and I'm like, they made a movie in 2007 with yeah. Marion Cotillard where yeah. she literally plays the character and sings all the music. Le yeah. Rose. Yeah. It's already it Why exists. are we making this movie again? One. Two, why are you doing it like this? I know. And they always try to make it seem like we're use we're doing it with the estate, so it's fine. Like do you not understand what people right. were just striking for right. for the last three yeah. months? Right. Like right. actors in particular? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, the writers were too. So I don't know. Like I feel like that is still not resolved. And I, oh, yeah. and it, I feel it, like it won't be resolved, truthfully. And I'm so mm -hmm. curious what's going to happen in the next week. Yeah. And is it possible that like we could go on a on the, like SAG after could go on another strike? I don't know. I don't know. I don't what, know how it works. I don't know how the unions work. Yeah. 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 I, I, and um. I'm also there's a there's a lot of I mean I my partner is somebody who's in the Screen Actors right. Guild. We've been mm -hmm. talking a lot about it. Mm -hmm. I also we were just listening in the car on the way over to a uh, a great video of some of our pals Marina Mastros, mm -hmm. Jay Washington mm -hmm. were on New Rock Stars mm -hmm. talking yeah. about this and talking about the specifics of the contract. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was really good to hear because I was like, okay, that's good that that's in there. That's good right. that that's in there. But yeah, like not you're all saying, of it is bad. Right, like you're saying, but there still may be Openings to mm. to take advantage, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, it feels like the message is you can't necessarily fight artificial intelligence at every level. Mm -hmm. It right. is going to update certain technologies mm -hmm. and processes and and methods that are already kind of in play. Yeah. yeah. So it's not a, necessarily about like shutting them down, but it's about like if that's going to happen, make sure these people are paid. Right. If that's, you know, right. Which yeah. all of that is good, but. Mm -hmm. I also have questions of like, I need to, I'm curious to know, does this mean that this is all going to be in play for three years if it gets mm -hmm. ratified? Right. And then in the renegotiation that things can still be updated. Yeah. I, yeah. Hope. I hope. I don't so. know. Yeah. I don't know. I think, and I think because especially now technology is moving so fast. Yeah. Yeah. And you look at AI where it was like things like chat GPT, where it is now versus where it was just six seven eight nine months ago yeah it's drastically evolved and changed yeah. yeah so in three years that contract and the sort of like whatever yeah. the writing is in that contract 
may be very out of date in three years. For sure. It because AI be, has it, changed so yeah, much. Yeah, it may need to be updated yeah. at that point. I'm and hoping it doesn't lead to another strike. Right. It's like every three years, our actors going to be striking mm-hmm, to, mm-hmm. to you know, it, get it, these clauses updated. I, it, uh, it makes me think, too, like there needs to be a whole committee mm-hmm. in SAG-AFTRA and in the WGA and mm-hmm. all these uh, organizations that are trying to protect artists yeah. that are just designed, dedicated, dedicated to tech right? because right. of how quickly, but yeah. also this conversation I was hearing with Marina and Jay and everybody at New Rockstars, it was like, there's elements to this where, no, 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 this means that like the federal government needs to come in right? right? because it's, we're now, we're not just talking about movies and actors. We're talking about like, can a, a studio or, or right? Like take a picture off of your Instagram and not pay you any money for it and use it in advertising right. or media mm-hmm. or what, like it's that whole thing yeah. of like, Oh, can they use a picture off of your Instagram right. and feed it into an algorithm right. to create a digital mock-up of a person mm-hmm. without mm-hmm. you getting paid? It's like, right. that's where mm-hmm. the U S government apparently needs to create. <laughs> yeah. You know, regulation I, that's for that's it. what I'm imagining. Cause at, at my job too, like there's a lot of fear and trepidation towards AI. Sure. Um, and it's, you know, it's not to that degree where it's like sure. copying people's likeness. It's mainly about the work you're doing and making sure things are honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also I feel like right now in, in the whole reach of AI, we're in the wild west. Like we're right. never going to see a time again right. in which it's not unregulated because there's going to be right. a point in which it's going to get to the, I think it's going to get to the point where somebody, the federal government or right. somebody else has right, to right, step right. in to be like, if you are going to make something AI, you have to label it as such. Mm-hmm. Right. And like, you know, it's not necessarily if you're like funnel pieces of information or art or right. or pe- pe- people's pictures right. into a process. Yes. You have to like credit them, pay yes. them, all of that right, kind of right. stuff. Like, yeah, it's crazy. I don't think it's out of the scope of AI to meta, met, like put it in the meta, metadata. This was created by AI, mm-hmm. like right. not necessarily like out loud, right? But like something in the in the code yeah. that when you yeah. create like a document, a piece of music, a piece right. of media, in the in the code in the metadata says created by AI. Right. Yeah. And that's not difficult to do. No. At right. all. Right. No. Right. And I mean, it's becoming so common now. People are starting YouTube channels, and this oh, does God. go against a lot of. Um, you cannot create a YouTube channel that is just autonomous in that way. It mm-hmm. cannot be just strictly driven by AI. But there have been instances where people who run YouTube channels have made videos where they've uploaded their likeness and their voice to programs and to mm-hmm, software and mm-hmm, systems sure. and made videos, talking head videos. Yeah. And it's kind of scary, yeah, you know? It very much is. And even now, the big thing is with translations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With translating videos to other yes. languages, it's not just about translating the words. It's now also AI readjusting your mouth. To make it look right. like you're actually speaking in Spanish, right. speaking in Japanese. Listen, I wouldn't be opposed to that if we could reach more people across the, across the right. globe, right? And if it was us creating this content. Yeah. And I wouldn't be opposed to that if, because right now, if a movie comes out and it's going to get translated into Czech or right. Italian or right. Japanese, they have to hire a person to then dub it mm-hmm. in those other right. countries. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't want those people to lose work. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You see what I'm exactly. saying? So it's like, okay, mm-hmm. fine. If, if you've hired an Italian actor mm-hmm. to play Adam in this movie... And Adam spoke in English, and the Italian actor is going to do it in a Italiano. Fine, then you can CG Adam's lips. Right. Yeah, that's, a de- exactly. that's an icing. That's do, a detail. Do the Justice League yeah. thing on his lips. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Let's do the Harry Cav- if, Harry if thing. Adam's like cool with it, you know. Yeah. And he and 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 all the and, and it's it's right. the same parameters of like, but we're not going to make you say anything shitty in right, Italian. Right, it's going right, to be the same right. thing. You like, fine. That's also, all fine. So, think about budgets, right? Like, yeah. do do you have a small time production? Yeah. And you need this process. Like, mm. well, will this process? <sighs> help you help your global reach mm-hmm. like if you use ai with just like the, yeah. the mouth reshaping right? Right, yeah. right, right, right so i think there's a lots of lots of pros and lots of cons because the way we've been thinking about it at work it's like look ai can help you in yes. a lot of little menial tasks totally. like yes. imagine if it could just create thumbnails for us like yeah. thumbnails right. with adam's like right, template right, right. just like boom right. done right? right and we got a thumbnail but, without spending hours but if we had hired a person to make really nice crafted thumbnails right like but, we got to keep doing that. But, I don't want to necessarily have that person lose work. Exactly. We're like, oh, we're just going to AI it, dude. But right your, now, your since like redundant. Adam makes it, we're just like, yeah. it's another thing that Adam well, doesn't right, have to worry right, about. Right. And it, it similar situation was when we found Autopod, which was a tool that could take one camera angle yeah. 
and I was able to set it up where it could cut to each person. Sure. I didn't have to do any of the editing sure. because it's sourcing right. the audio as reference to know what to cut to. Right. Sure. Because we can't and afford can, to hire an editor. So I'm can, the one editing. And then you it. can exactly. still tweak it after totally. the fact. It's yeah, just yeah. Yeah. Goes 100%. It just does it. It just automates the whole thing and then yeah. I can yeah. go in and tweak it. Yeah, man. So again, so it's like, like if you're if you're a one man production, a one man sort of like guerrilla filmmaking squad and right. you sure. need some help to get things done kind of quickly, right. can help. then I do think that there are uses for AI tools. But I think it's like we're gonna hire an AI editing system to replace the editor for the next Mission Impossible movie. That's shitty. It's no. Not, yeah. So when it's these billionaire companies yeah. trying to save a buck, right. then yeah. I'm just like, nah, dude. Yeah, yeah. You're you can shitty. afford it. You exactly. can afford it. You can pay, afford it. Pay up. By the what way, was, like it, what was it that Jeffrey Katzenberg was just talking about? Oh God, he's he's an idiot. Yeah. Jeffrey Tubi Katzenberg. <laughs> Tubi Katzenberg. That's right. That's the dude who invented Tubi. Yeah. 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 No, Quibi. 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 I was like, Quibi. wait, Tubi with ads. Yeah. Tubi. No, I cool. like Tubi. <laughs> Tubi. I fine. like Tubi. We fuck with Tubi. Yeah, yeah. I love Tubi. We Quibi. Shout out Quibi. to Tubi. We do you want to sponsor these videos, Tubi? Yeah. Yeah. We got you. <laughs> Tubi by Tubi. Yeah, yeah. Basically, Quibi. Yeah. basically more or less saying that using AI to basically pull the artist out of the creative process because it'll speed That's up shitty. the process yeah. of yeah. making yeah. animated movies. I'm like, To save money. Again, it's like the NAPI thing. Do you understand what's been happening for the last six months? I want to ask you guys, I don't know if you saw this, but there was a new Beatles song that came out. Did oh, you guys yeah. hear about that? I heard Ooh. about it, but I didn't see okay, it. Okay, so here's what happened. Sir Peter Jackson and mm-hmm. Weta was hired for this project. And he, Peter's been oh, doing the documentary. The documentary and... No, this is a brand new it is. original Beatles song. But he's been but working he did with the, like, yeah. Yeah. the Beatles. He did the documentary. People uh, he did, for years. He did yeah. the, the uh, ne- I think it was Netflix. Anyways. Disney Plus. Disney Plus, yeah. yeah and so back, um, yeah. what ended up happening was uh, Yoko released a track, uh, a track of John Lennon singing a demo song. Mm. And they were like, I think this was supposed to be the last Beatles song. And so what ended up happening was Paul McCartney signed off, Ringo <laughs> signed off. Yeah. They found some of George Harrison's unreleased guitar tracks with the unreleased John Lennon track. Paul and Ringo did original music and AI cleaned up John's voice and George's guitars. And, and, and so and I'm, I'm sure assuming on recorded on material that's Worn exactly, and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming getting the approval of of all, all the, of estates. the estates. Yoko right? John Ono Lennon's. owns all of John Lennon's sure. stuff, and she and Harris, George gave Harrison's permission. family, right? Same and thing. the Harrison also gave it this a go. This is fascinating. And they released the song, and then the video is a composite mm-hmm. of like re- unreleased footage from mm-hmm. like the documentaries and stuff mm-hmm. with modern day Ringo and, and, Paul and Paul playing music with their bandmates. Oh, like so, like old the, footage. What? Yeah, yeah. so it's like. The four of them we'll, there. We'll but, see it after. So it's like technically yeah. the four of them there. Yeah. yeah. But like it's it's Ringo playing the drums, but it's like John Lennon in the Sergeant Pepper right, outfit right, and right. like Harrison in like another thing, yeah. right? And so yeah, it's so, really so, interesting. So when it comes to that kind of stuff, right. you hear about that and you go, well, that's kind of amazing. Yes. What a magical gift to, that right. technology was able to help bring that to life right. because all of those people were sort of involved. Because I don't want to, sorry, Hire just another guitarist to come in. That's not the exactly. point. It's exactly. It's about George. It's, it's about, about George. John. It's yeah. about, it's, you know, yeah. And, and technically they 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 said that it felt like it was their final song. Like Paul <sighs> said, Paul said, this is it. Like, this yeah. is what I wanted to now end listen, the Beatles with. Here's what I want to ask you so, guys about going mm-hmm. off of that. Because it's all tied into AI technology. It's all tied into like deep fakes, mm-hmm. which is part of that. But I remember when Carrie Fisher died. Yeah, and there were people before and after the rise of Skywalker was released that were saying like they should have just recast Princess Leia mm-hmm. because I remember acting is yeah. what's important if you're putting an actor in a role in a movie, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. I don't think that is an invalid take. I think that's a valid take. Yeah, I agree. However, I just talked about how the Beatles was this person, this person, this person, this person. Yeah, that's what it's about. Yeah, I'm sure that a guitarist could play to the level of or oh, better yeah, than George Harrison. Yeah. But that misses the point. Right. And so my argument, I was fine with <laughs> Carrie Fisher's family, mm-hmm, right? Her mm-hmm. daughter, that sort of side of the process being a, like approving and being okay with them mm-hmm. using like mm-hmm. a deleted her scene. Her likeness yeah. and kind of like, you know, putting yeah. Carrie Fisher in there as yeah. opposed to another actress coming in being like, I'm Princess Leia now. Right. Which I felt like, I don't think that would have been the move. I am also okay with it in terms of if you're going to have now here's the difference we've 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 seen this we've talked about it if you're going to have a scene mm-hmm. of Luke Skywalker Mark is there he's doing part of it then mm-hmm. there's another actor but you try to deep fake basically Mark's young face right i'm okay with it for some of those results i wish that it was 
uh, not a voiceover voice because it sounded right. too omnipotent to to it didn't sound like it was a dude standing there being in a scene. Right. Yeah. But despite that, I'm okay with it because I'm like, well, because Mark is involved and he's getting paid. Yeah. And it's it's his character and it, you know because I, but then again, I don't want to see a new. Han, uh, new Luke Skywalker project, right? And they do that for the whole. Because I'm like, right. no, then bring in another actor. Now yeah. they did that with Solo. They brought in another actor, and I thought he did a great right. yeah. job. But to my brain, anything where it's post Harrison has played the character, mm-hmm. I feel like it's appropriate if they're going to do a young CG yeah. on Solo for a second and not take advantage. Same, you know, this goes back to Rogue well, One. This goes back to Tron Legacy. Here's mm-hmm. the, how do we feel here's, about that? Here's my thing about yeah. that. Right. So I wish it would get to the point, or uh, be, already be at that point. Where somebody like like um, George George Harrison, I'm still thinking the George Beatles. Lucas. George, Lucas. George Harrison, George George Harrison, 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 Harrison yeah. Ford, oh. Harrison Ford, George Harrison, George yeah, Lucas, Harrison Ford. It's too All many right. Georges and Harrison. Harrison Ford and Mark Hamill wrote in their contract. I you are okay to use this. Like mm. I want every decision based on AI on somebody's <clears> likeness <throat> to be controlled by that person. Exactly. Yeah. Or if right. I'm dead, yes. my family has to sign yes. off on it. Right. Or and or, if they're dead, their family Or if they have, want yeah. to just say like like Shaq, he's he fucking advertises everything. He's like, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Use my likeness. Just make sure you send all the money to my family. And that's there it. You like go. I it, every I think I think it gets into a tricky situation because it's that person's likeness, yeah. right? So of course. regardless of how you feel, if sure. they said, "Hey, don't do like, that," I want my likeness to be used in whatever. Yeah. Like it's really up to that person. That's true. And, and I wish likewise, that's what it went to. And likewise, if before Carrie Fisher died, if she had said, "I do not yes. wish," yeah. right? Then you better not exactly. Then you, exactly. Uh, then you better respect obviously right. their yeah. wishes, right. even yeah, if yeah. their mm-hmm. daughter was like, "No, no, put my mom in the movie." It's yeah. like, no, your mom said. Your mom she, said no. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm in total agreement yeah, with that. Yeah, 100%. And, and, it's very personal. And in that regard, you know, sometimes it's it's a little bit of gray gray area because someone like Peter Cushing mm-hmm. clearly died long before this was even a part of the for, filmmaking for process. Because right. he died right. in 1994, right. That's I think. That's tricky. Right. So That's, now yes. it's like you're going to the family and the family right. says, yes, right. but here's our demands or here's what we're asking right. for there in should, return. There should still be, the studio should be held accountable. There should still yeah. be those mm-hmm. protections set up. There should still be like the, um, if we are... Bringing back a character played by an actor who's no longer with us, mm-hmm. we have to make sure that if we're trying to pitch this, that we have to tell the family or the estate or whoever, like everything that we're planning mm-hmm. to do, everything mm-hmm. we're planning to have them say. And with something like Star Wars, <clears throat> I would imagine that the family of Peter Cushing would probably understand the mm-hmm. context. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. not going to be some radically. Do- it's right. like you're in. It's in Star Wars. Yeah, right? we're bringing back Grandma Thorkin. But, but yeah. still, pay them, pay the family, pay whoever. Yeah, there's a there, there's a lot of good that comes with the bad. Yeah. There's a lot of, you know, people are looking right now at the Star Trek franchise and they're going, we got a new Spock. So thank God the Star Trek franchise isn't doing what Star Wars is doing. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, that's different because they did a whole new show, but with like a younger version of the character that Leonard Nimoy ever played. Yeah. And mm-hmm. they also had yeah. the Zachary Quinto movies where yeah. it's like, right. again, a younger, and that's all fine. Mm-hmm. But um, if they were to do, if Star Trek were to they're do something- They're not doing season zero of the original series, you know? I mean, they, or yes. Are they technically? I, get, I mean, that's not what Strange New Worlds is, but yeah. kind of. But mm-hmm. no, you're right. Like mm-hmm. they have another actress playing Uhura mm-hmm. and they're doing that show probably up until the point where the original series happened and mm-hmm. then they're not going to just remake, like yeah. they're stopping. But, um, you know, it, it, it depends. If there was something where- Let's say it's kind of it's kind of messed up because it's th- this cast of Star Trek: The Next Generation. They're still all with us, right. like every member of that mm-hmm, cast, mm-hmm. and they're old man. You got mm-hmm. Patrick Stewart, you yeah. have Michael Dorn, yeah. but they all look amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they're definitely up there. If Patrick Stewart were to pass away, mm-hmm. but if he saw, if we, if he did the thing everybody's talking about, and there's a Star Trek project, a movie or a show or something where there's an opportunity for sort of a tribute, and it's quick and it's all signed off on. Mm-hmm. I would want it to be Patrick, and yeah. then that's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And not to have another character be like, I'm I'm Admiral Picard. Yeah. Another actor, rather. Because yeah. it's like, well, there's so much attachment to that one actor right. in that mm-hmm. role. Uh, but if those things happen, I would still want Star Trek to not just, or any of these franchises or whatever, to not be so referential. It's like, fine, do your tributes, but also do new stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. And I Provide think that's new a, opportunities for I actors. I think that's also something that is could be an issue in the long run. Mm-hmm. You, we know, everybody knows how difficult it is for fandoms to accept change. Yeah. <laughs> like, if we had an eternal Picard, I know he would be in I everything, know. everywhere, all at once. I know, dude. You're right. But <laughs> right. Remember, Literally. Adam, you posted about this when there was a, a like an AI tech expert on a talk show, and she mm-hmm. was like, Imagine if we could do right. 
the sequel to all your forever. favorite movies. Yeah, I was like, well, what if you didn't have to wait for <laughs> Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power season yeah. two, and you could just have AI spit out a season for you? No. And I was like, no. no. Garbage. Well, Garbage. first of all, Garbage. first of all, it would be completely inconsistent because your yeah. everyone's demands for what they would want season two to be would be different. Right. So there would be right. no consistency in story. So how do you even create a dialogue and a conversation around the experience of watching something like that? <gasps> but it's but impossible. Guys, what if it gets to the point like AI generated images mm-hmm. where you just put a quarter in and it gives you an <laughs> own your own personalized version of that story no oh in like so a little like, yeah there's <laughs> like a, a hundred billion different versions of the story of, that people want oh of God. lord of the rings part four right exactly like <laughs> after the return yeah, of the king. exactly Christ. after the return yeah. of the jedi of the king yeah <laughs> at that point at that point i mean at that point it's just like isn't technology just helping isn't technology just helping fan fiction mm-hmm. and yeah. fan yeah. films yeah. essentially mm-hmm. everybody and I'm wants like, fan fiction kind of yeah but mm-hmm. Then that, but that's still, it's not legitimate yeah. in the sense that mm-hmm. of everything else that we're talking about, yeah. you know? Because if it gets to that point, you're going to see a nonstop barrage of yeah. ben, ben Affleck Batman fan films. Right, but that's, exactly. That's you where know, like, like copyright that kind of law stuff. needs to come yeah, in. Right. That's why, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, crazy. circling it back, I guess, to the to the to what I brought up with Ed Piaf, they're gonna, that they're going to yeah. do this like fully AI performance slash thing. Well, that's the thing too. There's no, there's no information Usually when they do it, like you were saying with Luke Skywalker, mm-hmm. there Mark Hamill's on there to provide the performance and the reference and the help mm-hmm. to help make the performance come to life. But then they have a younger actor who's there actually doing the performance and then yeah. he gets deep faked. Yeah. How is it gonna work for this movie? Are you gonna get another actor to come in and sub to play the role and, and, sing, then, and then deep dude, fake over it? Like I don't know. I don't know. I, it's I, I honestly, it, to me it's still like such tricky yeah. especially when a movie about this person already exists is, already. I know. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. a real person. It's not a fictional character. If yeah. now if they had yeah. said we're just gonna make another biopic, it's right. like bring in another actor to play. Mm-hmm. It's like fine, you guys can do yeah. that. You know, it's 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 um it th- that I didn't click on that news story because I'm like I know so little information and it feels like this can't possibly be like the main pitch and what terrible timing like yeah. you were saying what oh a tone God. deaf Hello. announcement for this yeah. Warner Music Group to be like hey guys <laughs> everyone here's, talking, here's what we're everyone's doing talking next. about AI we'll check it's like no yeah. you dummies out. I got the new hot product yeah. everyone's shit talking this exact thing <laughs> yeah. and you guys They're are like, like well. Nah. That's our whole thing. That Nuh-uh. cannot. That cannot be the whole thing. Yeah. What the hell is the context? Well, That's I, what you I, think, and I think especially when it comes to, and I wasn't thinking about it till we just had this conversation, a real person versus a fictional character. Right. Exactly. Because there yes. is a little bit of like a difference. Yeah. Right. 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 A little right. bit of a difference. Fictional character. Okay. It, you're just telling me it's going to be an animated film. Mm-hmm. You're just yeah. telling me like <clears throat> you're okay. just telling me it's yeah. Simpsons season eighty seven. <laughs> yeah. Basically. <laughs> but Family Guy season one hundred and twelve. Yeah. But based on a true person's life, a true story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, man. That's, that's, that's weird. weird. Tricky territory. So I don't know. I, I I hope that they're able to come to a obviously an agreement and a consensus and that it all works out. Yeah. I would hope that you know they would not have to go on another strike but to we, figure we, out what this deal is. We but. have to remain aware of everything. We're t- like we're, oh, yeah. I'm learning 100%. every day. We're learning yeah. every. I mean, there's new stuff. Changing every all day. Yeah, yeah, it's changing on the it's on the ever daily. changing. So yeah. I don't think we'll ever be caught up on it, but nope. I think we have to cheers. Do you guys still have beers? Cheers Absolutely. to the strike cheers. being over. Cheers to the strike. Yeah. Cheers, cheers to us. Uh, you know, trying to get back to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Shout out to all of those um, those like strike captains. Yeah, all yeah. the people Everybody that were striking who stuck through it. You know, honestly, this is another person that I do want to give a little credit to. Uh, Jerry Ryan, Star Trek actor, mm-hmm. was there like every mm-hmm. day. Every day. Every day. It was his day. favorite thing to do <laughs> every, every day. And Michelle Hurd's another Star Trek actor, and she's yeah. like involved with the, um, I think in the negotiation committee. I may be wrong. But anyway, yeah. kudos to everybody who like fought hard, man, because mm-hmm. it's. And hopefully they can get everything that they need. Yeah. But also, hopefully this AI stuff doesn't screw everybody over. I for, almost forgot about yeah. this. Oh. Uh, I want to give a shout out oh, to yeah. our homeboy Joey, Joey Fine. Joey Fine. Joey for making us Hang this on. awesome rug. There you go. Get that one. Get that. Get the, get, clean it off. Clean it off. There you go. Yeah. Joey Fine, wow. aka Chumflower on Instagram, yeah. uh, made us this amazing rug. It's super soft. It's, it's so nice. it slush. It feels it really is. nice. I don't know, Joey. I don't know if you're selling stuff, but you should sell. <laughs> Sell this stuff because yeah. it's really soft. Can I get this as a blanket? Is that velvet? <laughs> Is that velvet? <laughs> it's really nice. Thank you so much. Yeah. Great really, work. Really cool. Thank Thanks, you Joey. so much. Uh, 
we might do a little um, office rework in the mm-hmm. next couple oh. months. So this would be maybe you know, a little video on that. Edition. Could be cool. That'd be great. Yeah. Actually, that might be yeah, that, that would be really cool. Yeah, 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 that might be cool. But yeah. thank you so much. This is yeah, great. Thank you. Really Go ahead and follow him on Instagram or find him and see if you can yeah. get your own because yeah. it's great. And if you're in the LA area, pick it up from him because he doesn't want to ship it. <laughs> yeah. well, I don't blame you because <laughs> it's expensive. That's a lot. <laughs> That's what I did, and it's worth it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cool. Um, Adam, let's get to what grinds your gears because what grinds your gears is kind of what grinds my gears. <laughs> oh. it's, it's very true. It's, it's very, very true. Very kind of similar topics. Yeah. Well, so yours yours is more based on streaming platforms and mine yeah. is more based around physical media, which right. is funny because you just came back from Japan. Yes. yes. You brought us some gifts. Yes. And the first thing that I said was, why is this so fucking hard to do here in the United States? <laughs> right. This is a 4K Ultra HD copy from Japan of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Yes. But as an added bonus, you know what else is in here? The regular Blu ray. The regular Blu ray. Yeah. And a 3D Blu ray. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and some paper. And, and some paper. Whoa, don't paper. flash that Digicop. Whoa, Somebody's whoa, about whoa. to get a oh, free yeah, Digicop. Right. Why, right. why is this so <laughs> hard to do in America? Why? Yeah, yeah, Disney, yeah. Bob Iger, yeah. all the people that I know watch our stuff because I know <laughs> I email with you about physical media. Why is this so difficult? Wait, you why? email with Bob Iger? About no, I wish. Media? I wish. Oh, okay. That would be Why, great. Be why great. is Avatar The Way of Water not on a 4K 3D combo pack? Why do yeah. I got to buy two copies of the same fucking movie? At least. It's crazy. At I don't least, understand. At least. Have this in the U.S., but like at a at like a limited amount. Yeah, like a collector's edition, right? Or something. I, I'll get the 4K 3D. Yeah. yeah, but then still have a normal 4K for regular consumers yeah. or a normal mm-hmm. Blu-ray. Yeah. For reg- like I don't understand, man. Yeah, this I, is I, yeah. It, when, well, you import these, and it I normally do. costs you a hundred dollars. About shipping. ninety bucks. Yeah. yeah. First, I think the first one I got was Black Widow the movie, Why? and I was Why? like, I know this is not worth ninety dollars. I mean, it's but still I really not cheap. Like it. For sure, right? This this whole thing in Japan, I think, is around fifty bucks, yeah, right? forty to fifty bucks yeah, or something yeah. like that. Um, but I just which is not it which is luggage. not too far off for what the retail right. price on four K Blu Ray right. is. Right. right. The difference is is that a lot of times throughout the year, a lot of these movies go on sale, so mm-hmm. you can find a copy, well, at least a four K copy of something like Doctor Strange for fifteen bucks. Right. It's not impossible. Right. right. You have to wait if you want right. a day one. You're gonna have to pay the full price, which. You know, I I have done that. You know, like I own plenty of things that I bought, especially because now for certain movies that I really, really, really am looking forward to, I'll buy the retailer exclusive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like Oppenheimer, I got the Walmart version because it's a really cool digi book. But my biggest frustration, and I was just telling Augustine, was I saw a video on Instagram literally just this morning of a guy who was like, here's a challenge for you. Yeah. Go on your streaming services and go watch Westworld. It's a great show. Yeah. Surprise, it's not on HBO Max anymore. Oh. They removed it. Mm-hmm. But if you want to get it, you now have to go to a different streaming platform like Amazon Prime to buy every season for $25. Right. So you got to pay $100 just to get Westworld. Mm-hmm. But you know what? What if Amazon Prime loses the streaming rights and to sells Westworld it back and to sells Am- it back to, to HBO. HBO? Then you'll lose it. From whatever you just spent a hundred from bucks. whatever like imaginary yeah. digital yep. cloud you bought it and rested yep. it in, yep. and then and they won't give you your money back. Yeah, yeah. And then today, Christopher Nolan. Well, this is from a screening I think that happened last night for yeah. Oppenheimer. He was yeah. talking about how they put so much effort. Like he he says he knows that he's known as being the guy who's all about theatrical exhibition. Yes, film, IMAX, sixty five millimeter, all that he stuff. Is. But he says he also has a massive passion for home video, mm. which is why he, yeah. ever since The Dark Knight, they had put so much effort into putting the best possible quality of their movies on Blu-ray and now 4K Ultra HD. He pretty much says, like, especially because, so you can own it on your shelf and the crazy, you know, evil, evil streamers. Streamer, streaming services can't pull it away from you. Yeah, exactly. Which I'm like, yeah. Exactly. And I think that's why we are so... I wouldn't say bullish, but we're definitely like very persistent about recommending physical media to people yeah. all yep. the time. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to talk about. Is, yeah. And that's what's been grinding my gears lately is why do these streaming services suck so bad? Yeah. And they're so <sighs> expensive now. I know, dude. I know, right? dude. Yeah. Have, like, have, have you considered the thing? I think I'm about to do this, which is cancel all of them but one. Cancel mm. every streaming but service Netflix. but Netflix for a month. And just watch everything on Netflix. One at a time. Yeah. Right? One at mm-hmm. a time. If you got a show, oh, honey, this has been sitting in our queue for eight months. Yeah. Let's yep. actually watch this show. Mm-hmm. Let's watch The Fall of the House of Usher. What right. a great show. What right. else is on here? Only and then, look we'll, at movie- then we'll bring yeah. it back in February when Avatar comes yeah. out. Only look at <laughs> movies on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Only look at TV shows on Netflix. That's all we got. Netflix. And then yeah. once you kind of feel like, all right, 
It's been a month. It's been two months. Yeah. I think we're good. Cancel that yeah. and then pull up Move on to Apple the next TV one. Plus. Right. I think that's eventually what's going to yeah. happen because the whole draw from the beginning, specifically Netflix and a Netflix yeah. is the one that grinds my gears the most because yeah. they were the ones who brought this all to fruition, right? Yes. Yeah. And now they're the worst ones. It's it's the fact that we're not getting more for the extended price right. that, that we're paying. Yeah. Right. And they're putting blocks where you can't share with your family yeah. anymore. You can't yeah. share a password. You can't share accounts. There's honestly there's nothing on Netflix that I ever want to watch. I spend more time yeah. scrolling mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. than actually yeah. watching anything. Yeah. And so I'm just like what am I paying for here? Like, right. what exactly am I getting for eighty thousand dollars a month? Mm-hmm. Basically, at this point, like, it's it's crazy. I mean, it's really I, frustrating. My mom man. has Netflix, and so we were sharing the Netflix account. Mm-hmm. And the only thing that I truthfully was watching was whatever we were watching at the mm-hmm. time, which right. was Squid Game and yeah. Arcane. What we were acting to, right? Exactly. What we were acting to, exactly. And then outside of that, it was usually mostly Mike Flanagan shows. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, it was like uh, Midnight Mass, Midnight Mass mm-hmm. or. Hill of Hill House, Bly Manor, right. now House of the Fall, or Fall of the House of Usher. Yeah. That's kind of it. I'm not really watching, you know, the new Russo Brothers movie on there because no. no. it's yeah. just like. And the other thing is, mm. for all of the streaming services, if yeah. there's movies on there that you really want to, uh, that you love, yeah. Like for example, I think the other night, uh, Abby had never seen the movie Rudy mm-hmm. with Sean Astin. Yeah. 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 One of my great, faves. Mm, great. Um, and I think it's streaming on Hulu. Mm-hmm. But like, if it wasn't on Hulu and it wasn't, and it could, I could only rent it or whatever for four bucks in mm-hmm. HD or buy it for more digitally, I would pause and be like, I'm going to go buy the Blu ray. Yeah, yep. yeah, and yeah. I'm still pla- That's what and I'm, I'm doing. And I'm yeah. still planning to buy the Blu ray. You know why? Because yeah. I love that movie, Rudy. Yes, yeah, exactly. But thankfully, it was streaming on Hulu. I looked mm-hmm. it up. I'm like, let's mm-hmm. watch it on Hulu mm-hmm. tonight. We did. Yeah. But for any, in terms of like, Older movies is what I'm talking about. Yeah. I don't really watch older movies on no. streaming services, like I just said, the way most normal people do, I mm. think. And I think before streamers, just old movies on cable. Most people just watched old movies because they're playing oh, yeah. on cable. Right, yeah, right, that's, right, you know, that's exactly why. That experience, I think, has kind of gone away from me. I don't have mm. cable. I don't think any of us do. No, no, but um, no. I, I'm planning to just buy the movies that I love. Totally. That's what I'm doing. That's it. Yeah. That's so that's, that's I mean, it. you guys you know need. me like I was very not collecting any physical media. Yeah, yeah. you and weren't now, against it, you just didn't. I wasn't against it, yeah. I didn't do it. And there's the space issue that I yeah. get it. There's I a very get particular it. reason why I had a huge collection yeah. and then I put it all in that little disc binder thing yeah. kind of yeah. thing and like the CD folder. Yeah, and then my siblings ruined it. Like uh, they watched all my stuff and scratched all my movies, and yeah. I was just like, okay, know, cool. Dude. Like, Talks I don't want to build this up again. Yeah, but now that. I'm experiencing this kind of, I, I think it's like a slump in streaming services. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like this, str- this slump, I'm like, look, if I really want to support a project and show these creators that I really love their stuff, get that I'm going to buy their stuff. Yeah. And, and this yep. specifically started with Gendy Tartakovsky, Tartakovsky right. yep. because Primal is such a good show. Mm-hmm. I was like, I need to get this show and right. show him because I'm on streaming services, like, yeah, it's just a show that's out there. It might even seem like a bad show. Because people might not be watching it as right. much as like other shows. Right. So I'm just like, if I buy the Blu-ray, I feel like I'm voting with my dollars more than like it matters. Yeah. The, it matters. The, the the HBO content, yeah. right? And so I was like, okay, I'll get a higher quality version. I can watch it whenever I want. A few special I can show feature. it to my friends, special mm-hmm. features, and I'm just yeah. like, and I can show it to somebody and say, here, watch this. Yes. Yeah. Spend your time watching this and then Bring it back to me, and then we can talk about it. Right, like it's a right. whole more and then like your dumbass social... friend goes, "I don't have a Blu-ray player anymore." And you go, "Get the f- what are you doing? You got an Xbox and then or a I PlayStation?" Kick them off yeah. my balcony, yeah. bro. They're thirty bucks at <laughs> yeah. Target. Go. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I mean, even and you know, Matt Damon talked about this when he was on Hot Ones. Yeah. He talked about yeah. how the yeah. death of the DVD really Oof. hurt a lot of the residuals that actors would get because mm-hmm. when a movie would go from the theater and it would run and run and run and run and then eventually be gone and it wouldn't be on home video for maybe like six months later. Yeah, it. He the way he explained it was it was almost like it was getting another distribution like a, right. a brand new audience was now going to mm-hmm. discover your movie plus Blockbuster was buying tons of copies yes. to rent when Absolutely. the movies were new when the movies yes. were new yeah. yes, you know that's yes. a whole second life yeah. yeah it was like a whole second life second life for a movie and and you know now that's kind of gone like mm-hmm. you know Netflix mm-hmm. just this year ended their DVD subscription service. It, you know, and infuriating. It was a billion dollar business and you know, it was making them like a hundred I think I was reading hundred and fifty million a year. But like that's still something. Yeah. 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 But you it's, know, they and, and, they didn't and wanted to end it. The other thing that I, I feel like is what should happen in and happened this year mm-hmm. is that Barbie was a massive hit. Yeah. 
And everybody Barbenheimer was, was a phenomenon. Everybody was going, but wait, Barbie's just going to be on HBO Max mm-hmm. like in a couple months. It's not on HBO Max yet. Nope. Because no. they, I Our, think, they figured smartly out. were like, wait, once we release this on Blu-ray, mm-hmm. Second Life. Before yes. any of the streaming services, Blu-ray, let's yeah. let it sit on Blu-ray for months. Yeah. And then eventually we'll put on a... That's what yeah. Disney should be doing with their big yes. releases. Yes. yes. You know, I just saw the new Haunted Mansion movie mm-hmm. on Disney+. Plus. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed it. But I'm like, this should have had a theatrical release. It came out during the strikes, right. which sucked. In July, yeah. Should have had a Blu-ray release. And then I should have been watching this a year yeah. later, next Halloween, on Disney+. On Plus. Disney Plus. Oppenheimer, Crazy. same thing. Oppenheimer specifically did not do an early digital release. Yeah. It is coming yeah. out on digital and on Blu-ray the exact the, same time. It, as it should. Yeah. Oh, and, and it's not going to be on a streaming service probably for a while. You know what Chris they Nolan should, you know, is not necessarily like... Right. Big on and what does Universal have? Thing. Peacock? I, like Universal yeah. doesn't really have yeah. you know, the way yeah. that Warner Brothers Barbie does yeah. or Disney does. Yeah. And dude, they should have done... Blu-ray first for two months and then digital. Totally. You know? And I yeah. feel like if movie studios did that and started hyping up their... And saying like, <laughs> They'd guys... They'd be like, oh my God, we're making money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, Let's go, exactly. Let's go back to Blu-rays. Look, we, got, we got the best Blu-rays. And, yeah. I'm trying to find a very specific sound mm-hmm. for you guys that I want to see how you react to it. <laughs> oh, it's boy. a song. So oh, okay. you guys talking about... It's, it's like music. It's, it's talking... Since we're talking about this kind of stuff, they play it over images of like... Blockbuster in 1996 mm. and like mm. going to the movies in 1998 kind of thing. Mixed feelings, but okay. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Wait, I'm trying to find it though. I can't seem to find it. Um, but I think there's a lot to. I think I know the music. I think I know the song. What it is like it? This. It goes. No, I'm thinking of no, it goes like this. <laughs> Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I'll find it. But yeah. it it, ma- it brings me it makes me very nostalgic for the days of like sure that special feeling of going to Blockbuster yeah, and Friday like night getting a pizza. Your parents get letting you get a pizza. You pick a movie and maybe a video game, mm-hmm. and you know you're gonna have like a great night and maybe Dude. even like a really yeah. good weekend. Even because bef- this even, is happening. Even before I worked at Blockbuster, I remember the feeling of like, oh, I know this movie's coming out on DVD today. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm exactly. going to Blockbuster to rent it today. Right. Right. <laughs> this afternoon, it was like Tuesday. Yeah. This afternoon, I'm renting this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Versus Friday, I'm like, I'm right. gonna get this today because it might be sold out by Friday. Yeah, exactly. Might be rented out. Exactly. Uh, great feeling. Well, and the other thing too about the streaming services that is so up setting this is, is we've, 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 found it? we've trained it. I'll play it in the background as you guys talk the, the studio has trained people and it's all about that whole thing of like shortening the exhibition window and then yeah. shortening how long before it's on streaming yeah they've trained audiences to realize like oh I don't have to go to the theater to watch it I'll just I know, wait at dude. home Mistake. to me it's like Mistake. hello studio do you understand that like you are a company that makes things that are for a theatrical experience yes why are you discouraging people from going to the movies yeah even though people like to complain about the theatrical experience, in my opinion, and I know it's a special case scenario for us because we live in Southern California, there are a lot of really nice theaters here. That's true. IMAX theater, 70 yeah. millimeter, yeah. you know, 35 millimeter, all that sort of stuff. And I know that's not the case for everyone, but even going to a mom and pop theater, yeah. if they have even a lower end 2K projector, I would take that than watching it on my 40 inch television at home oh, for oh, the yeah, first 100%. time. For sure. If you're asking why aren't consumers excited about that and why aren't studios having success in pushing that, I know the answer. And it's very cynical, but it's because regular people are going to go, movies are too expensive. I right, cannot take my right. kids. It's $100. To, to, for them, for yeah. me and two kids to see a kids movie, mm-hmm. which is normally not even very good. I've got Disney Plus at home. That's my babysitting service. Yeah. I'm going to wait until like, and I get that. Mm-hmm. So I feel as though the solution needs to be figure out a way to have less corporate greed, mm-hmm. less payment for a CEO that doesn't understand what they're doing, David Zaslav, and more money towards, okay, we put it in our budget. This Marvel movie is going to cost this amount of money, but this other movie is going to cost less for a movie ticket. Yeah. Incentivize people to go to the movie theater. They tried to do it with putting alcohol and bars in the movie theaters, which is part of it, but it's like do other things. Of like, oh, if you go to the movie theater this weekend, get a fresh new dope Pokemon card. Remember mm-hmm. when that happened oh, yeah, in 1998 or whatever? Dude. Like Those kinds of things. Dude. It's like... Yeah. The Burger King gold Pokemon card like giveaways, yeah. right? Yeah. Like That kind yeah. of stuff. It's yeah. just... I don't feel like there's... This goes back to like bang for your buck, like value yeah. for the for the mm. money you're paying. Yeah, I don't feel like 
these companies care that much anymore. That, right. Like you're not getting the value for what you're paying for. They're just like, oh, they're going to pay for it either way. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It, it, and I'm not saying that this needs to happen to sort of compensate for like the lower quality of a movie. Yeah. Ideally, everything is firing on all cylinders. You've right. made a pretty decent movie. Mm -hmm. You know what your target demographic is. You've mm -hmm. marketed it pretty well. Yeah. And the movie theaters are ready to play ball. And yeah. AMC or all these other chains or whatever, they're ready to bring in the movie in and mm -hmm. do what they can mm -hmm. to help sell tickets. And it's going to be an event. Mm -hmm. What's my incentive yeah. you know, to go to the theater and yeah. drop that money? And, and, and again, it's about marketing of the mm -hmm. experience. You don't yeah. have to convince a Christopher Nolan that the movie theater is the optimal experience. Right. But you do kind of have to convince a person who's yes. sitting at home and they can't even tell that True Motion is right. on their TV. Exactly. Yeah. That's tough exactly. to get through. It's tough. We're different people. It's you tough. Gotta I, get I went to a furniture store store and I, they were playing uh. Top Gun Maverick and I was like where the fuck is the remote I gotta turn off the true motion my man my man, 12 my man. Can I see, I'm gonna need the remote can I see quickly, the remote quickly quickly oh. to, the whole wall of TV oh. yeah. with true motion on it's just like yeah. this is making me oh, nauseous oh and then going yeah. to a Best Buy and having an employee be like no but you want true motion I'm no. like no you don't I no. want to no, you strangle don't. you exactly so I think it's there marketing is, there is a balance <laughs> in like yeah there's people who are you know the Marvels. I went to go watch it at a matinee show here in LA. It was still yeah. eighteen dollars. Mm -hmm. Exactly, dude. It we need to cut that shit out, dude. Eighteen yeah. bucks we for need a cut... matinee show? We, yeah. I go to AMC's I saw matinee website and I, and I paid thirteen. I think. Right. I go to AMC's website and they're like, if you see the show at eleven a.m., yeah. twenty percent off. I'm yeah. like, eleven a.m. You need to have that until five p.m. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. We're talking exactly. about eleven a.m. That's uh -huh. the only showing that's twenty percent right. off. It's well, brutal. that's why I go to movies on Sunday mornings because mm -hmm. yeah. that's like that's yeah. that's primo time. Nobody's there. Especially if you yeah. go to not necessarily a chain, or if it's not as big of a chain as AMC. Yeah, if exactly. It's a, if it's a little bit, exactly. not necessarily, not specifically mom and pop, but there's some like Regal theaters that tend to be a little bit less. Well, that was Regal mm -hmm. that I went to. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? But mm -hmm. the only issue with that is that the smaller chains tend not to have 3D movies. Yeah. Right, right, right. right. So there's a little bit of give and a little sure. bit of take. Right, right. Sure. I was for sure no IMAX, the, yeah. maybe 3D. I was willing to pay the $18 for the 3D experience. Yeah. And I was like, okay, fine. 3D experience. Sure. Yeah. I'm giving my money sure. to where I think it matters. Mm -hmm. Right. And like, that's, that's the thing. That's another thing that I know we have people in our videos and our community and in our comments that are always like dogging on 3D even as a concept. You're talking about how great Christopher Nolan is. He doesn't mm -hmm. like 3D, which mm -hmm. is totally fine. A bunch of people in Hollywood do not, obviously, clearly, yeah. like 3D. Right. But I have, I'm really tired of having the argument of like, I'm telling you I believe that it's worth it. And people go, mm -hmm. it's not worth it. It doesn't add to the... And I think that that's partly a completely valid person's take it's mm -hmm. valid well there's some people who can't even see 3d C right, correct right? exactly yeah. it's like t it's like trying to tell a colorblind person that yeah. color t movies <laughs> yeah. are great it's that like shade of green is dope dog. doesn't matter <laughs> it doesn't and that's yeah. totally okay it yeah. doesn't it doesn't yeah. you know it, it's their own personal experience um but i i look at that and i go you guys failed with the marketing of this mm -hmm. totally. because to yeah. me I'm telling people to go see the Marvels in 3D, or mm -hmm. I told them earlier this year to go see uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, yeah, right. because I'm or like... Across the Spider-Verse. It's yeah. going to be... Well, Across wasn't in 3D. Oh, that's right. It, it was But it, the no, point is, it's, it's yeah. going to be rad. Go see it, and after it's gone in the theaters, and yeah. after the 3D is gone in the theaters, you may never see it this way again. Ever. Now, yeah. you... Yeah. Are, five days. You are looking at a Marvel movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, five days sometimes is the short window, five and then days. they take like, it out that, of That's not even an exaggeration. Yeah. But you're looking at a Marvel movie that I thought would have been the same case, but mm. Thankfully, Disney's only releasing it in Japan on a 3D Blu-ray. Most right. people don't have the 3D home setup, mm -hmm. and most people aren't going to spend $90 no. to mm -hmm. import a movie. So you're yeah. very lucky mm -hmm. that you can keep watching this movie if you want in this way. Yeah. Because you have all that stuff. But for most people, they don't have it. So I'm yeah. like, even more of a reason to go and see a movie that, <laughs> totally. you, that you think you may already maybe might enjoy. Mm -hmm. Might as well in, or see it in a way that, oh, I remember I saw the Marvels in the 3D. Right. And yeah. I saw it that way. It was a really cool thing that happened. And mm -hmm. I'm never mm -hmm. going to be able to see it yeah. that way again. Yeah. Marketing. It's all marketing, it dude. Is, yeah. Hollywood really dropped is. the ball on that one. Oh, yeah. No, totally. Yeah. And and the unfortunate thing is that, and I know that we've had these conversations with people, is they reference movies from 13 years ago as bad as the uh, reason why 3D is bad. Uh, and I'm like, absolutely. guys, 2010, you cannot look at uh, Clash mm -hmm. of the Titans and Avatar The Last Airbender I'll, as an example of why 3D is bad. Yeah. I'll give you you got to look at yes. Avatar, Titanic, yeah. Jurassic uh -huh. Park. I'll, I'll give uh -huh. you even a specific example from this movie, and I've used it before when people yeah. go, there's no difference between a 3D movie and a 2D movie version of the same movie. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And I go, you mostly are right, but I'll give you a, an exact specific example. Mm -hmm. When you watch that movie flat, the scene where Scarlet Witch is starting to attack Doctor Strange yeah. through the multiverse mm. and through the universe, and there's like a framed photo of her and her family, mm. and like the picture, like she turns her head, which is very Sam Raimi, right? Totally. That's already a great little, fun yeah. little spooky moment. 
in when you watch it in 3D, they did this on purpose. When she changes her head, it comes out of the yep. frame a yep. little bit yep. for that quick moment. And I remember seeing that in 3D and going, "That's dope." Yeah. And that's that that's is not scurry. that yeah. is not how that came across <laughs> no. in the 2D yeah. technically. Yeah. And another amazing moment was in Avengers: Infinity War. Which one? When Doctor Strange gives Thanos the Time Stone. It's sick, dude. Oh, yeah. And yeah, in yeah. 2D, it just appears yeah. in between his fingers, and he pull, plucks it out of the yeah. sky. Mm-hmm. In 3D, that shit is in the sky, and then in 3D, it comes it goes, to his it hand. Goes, yeah. And then he it's, plucks it's, it. It's, through space. It's, it's really dope. awesome. But yeah. listen, we can be saying this stuff, and there's still going to be yeah. somebody going, well, that's, I don't care. Sucks. That's, they're, but they're gonna that's go, a gimmick. That's, that's the impression I got when I watched it in 2D, you yeah. idiots. And I'm like, maybe, maybe that's true, but that's not... What is actually playing with the 2D yes. version right. of the movie exactly. versus, right, right, right. you know, same with the, even the first Doctor Strange when they're doing that cool kaleidoscope yeah. stuff. Yeah. There's so much depth added yeah. to some of those effects that in 2D you kind of, you miss mm. those added effects. You do, anyway, you do, you do, yeah. that's all I'm talking about. I was just marketing. Yeah, and I mean, stuff. like, and I was not planning on doing this, but this year, like, I, I invested pretty heavily in, like, redoing my home entertainment setup. You did. Yeah. And yeah. got a badass projector. Yeah, yeah. I, have a, I have a projector. I have a 100 inch it. screen now, and it's it worth plays it. 3D, and I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm I'm that type of person. I mm-hmm, want to have right. the best. I want people to come over and be like, "Holy fuck, this is incredible!" Yeah, mm-hmm. that's and what I want for people. I think that's what it takes, though. I think it takes like that kind of catered, catered experience mm-hmm. for people to realize. Because your girlfriend, for example, mm-hmm. she didn't realize what she was missing. Mm-hmm. She watched all of her stuff on oh a little God. tiny crappy television. She was so not into the projector, and right. then we watched Doctor Sleep, and she was like, "This is incredible." Yeah, yeah. exactly. And yeah. it takes that kind of like catered experience for people to realize like mm-hmm. there is there is something better, better yeah. just like my wife she she didn't she didn't really care about sound coming out of a television we had a crap it's just oh, crappy speakers. same thing yeah mm-hmm. yeah crappy speakers coming from the tv and then i was like i'm buying a surround sound system yeah. now she can't watch tv without oh, it absolutely yeah. because i'm like it of course it it, it enhances the yeah. experience and i right? was the same way like for years i just used the sound from the tv not realizing oh i'm just having tv blasting against the wall I'm not mm-hmm. really experiencing the full tinny potential. Sound. Mm-hmm. It's just, yeah. yeah, and then I just got a sound bar with a woofer, yeah. Yeah. and now I have a surround sound system, right. and I'm like, yeah, this is it. You can't go back You can't go that. back. We, we were just watching, I forget what we were watching, maybe Loki the other day, the other night, maybe last night in our living room, and my girlfriend and I are on the couch, and something happens, and our cat is on the couch too, yeah. our little boy cat, and something happens, and it only comes out of the side uh-huh. little surround speaker, uh-huh. and the cat got up. The cat yeah. looked up right, at the speaker right, like, right. Uh-uh, what, was uh-huh. yeah. what was that? What was that? I was like, that's awesome. That, that's gotcha, amazing. Gotcha, gotcha, bitch. All right, well, look, I think we, we've we talked enough about all the stuff that we are, clearly are very passionate about, but we're already that many minutes into this podcast, maybe, and I do want to talk to you guys about the MCU. I want to talk to you guys about Loki. I want to talk to you guys about the Marvels. Do we want to review a little mini review I of mean, the Marvels? I mean, if you or? guys want, I feel like I probably enjoyed it. I think you you enjoyed it based off of your it. thing. You thought it was Adam, just mid tier. Adam didn't like was it. very mid tier about it. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. And then we all saw Loki together. Yeah. Yes. And we really liked that. Yeah. Right. For, yeah. 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 Um, I, I, I was. I was really. I mean, Loki has the advantage that it had a season one that was already really strong. Right. Yes. So and going into it, of, my yeah. expectation was already kind of high for that show. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like it met whatever my expectation was. And then it did things that I was like, oh, I would have never expected to go this route. This is great. Really quickly, set the parameters of how you want us to talk about this. Well, basically. Do you just want to give it like a review or what do you want to? No, what I wanted to talk about was where are we going in the MCU? Mm -hmm. I see. Let's get into spoilers for both of those projects. Because the thing that happens at the end of Loki, spoilers, but Uh also maybe hopefully soon you're going to see our reactions there on YouTube and they may already be on Patreon. For the finale, but working on him. Loki is uh, now sort of overseeing the multiverse. Yeah, basically, mm-hmm. he's got him in his hands. He's watching them all. And, Gripped by and, the balls, as yeah. some would say. And yep. then at the end of the Marvels, Monica, boom, she's in another universe mm-hmm. that maybe has the X Men in it, at least Beast, at least a Charles Xavier, mm-hmm. and then a character named Binary, mm-hmm. which is kind of a version of Captain Marvel, mm-hmm. but this is Maria Rambo, mm-hmm. and she's probably Monica going to have to find a way back. Right, is what we're right. thinking. So yeah. like. How, are those things going to intersect? Are you guys, how do you feel about the current state of the MCU sort of overall storytelling multiverse saga? And and how do you feel about where it could potentially go? That's Oof. a big question. Yeah, my man. Friend. We're going to spend another hour yeah. talking about well, no, here's, I mean, here's what I'll tell you about yeah. my feelings on the multiverse saga. Yeah. The thing that I thought was impressive about the Infinity Saga was 
things that were set up were paid off almost immediately. Mm-hmm. You know, like or at some, least it felt like that. At least, at least it felt like that. You know, the post credit scene for Ant Man basically tied into Civil War. I know the post credit scene for uh, was it? What, what, which one was it for Thor: The Dark World? Thor: was, The Dark World was the post credit scene. Into, the Maximoffs. No, that was uh, Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier, which then the goes next into year Avengers. Goes into yeah. Avengers. Yeah. So it's paid off fairly quick. The only thing that I feel like kind of had like a long buildup was Thanos, which made sense because he ended up right. being the main that, villain. That of, was the buildup. That was the buildup. Yeah. yeah. Now with Multiverse Saga, we're getting characters. We're getting Hercules. We're getting Cleo. We're getting mm, yeah. the mm-hmm. X-Men, which I also am like, why do we keep teasing the Fox X-Men? Mm. Where, I, I, I where have are the MCU about X-Men? That. I, have, r- I yeah. have thoughts about that as well. Uh, yeah. Which, you know, obviously it does make sense in some ways because we're going to get a Deadpool Wolverine movie, so I understand. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'm like, we've now seen two versions of Monica Rambeau. Mm-hmm. We've now seen multiple teases for the X Men. Well, three if you can't if you count. Uh, or, that's true. You know, because yeah. yeah. she was Captain Marvel was in Captain this Marvel yeah, exactly. in movie, yeah. running so, around, and then she got killed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they all got killed. <laughs> she yep. keeps getting killed. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the story, I think the big thing that is a difference is I don't feel like it's building blocks to something. I feel like we're spending some time here, spending it's all, some time here. It's all still here. islands. It feels like islands to me, and yeah. I wouldn't say that that'd be a necessarily a bad thing if right. that's if they weren't teasing that we're building to an Avengers movie because right. I don't feel like yeah. it's ramping up. I feel like it's just kind of like it's going I this get way and not I get that. this way. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. Um, yeah. One thing that I did really appreciate about the Marvels too mm-hmm. was even more so than the X Men tag. Yeah, I was really the Kamala Khan showing up to uh, Kate Bishop Hawkeye mm-hmm. because that to me I'm funny. like. That's the Young Avengers, as, 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 as the Nick, Nick Fury. Fury. <laughs> At, that I was right. so excited about. Which and, I think, and I, but I think that the, feels like a ramp up. But it's also, it's like, dude, it's been years. Yeah, what are, like, right. what are yeah. we doing? And I think what makes some of that stuff hard, yeah, is for us, it's great because we've watched all of that. Mm-hmm. But sure. what if people are not watching the exactly. Disney Plus sure. shows? Exactly. I know. Then and Haley Steinfeld whole, shows up, and you're like, listen, because my girlfriend hasn't seen Hawkeye. Sure. So she's like. Well, sure. was I, I get it, there. and there's there's a conversation right now happening online where people are saying the Disney Plus shows are a great opportunity for storytelling. Yeah, but should they be used instead of introducing new characters like Ms. Marvel mm-hmm. or Monica getting powers? Mm-hmm. Should they be used to explore already established characters like, like Loki? Sam Wilson or like Loki, Sam yeah. Falcon and, and Winter Soldier was a mini series that was like you already know these two characters, right. mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's going to be a, a, a bridge between their basically their their last movie and the next movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's it. That's a worthwhile conversation because yeah. I love the Ms. Marvel show. Yeah, and I great. and I think that my favorite introduction in phase four and i understand people hate this for valid reasons and for invalid reasons she hulk i love that her introduction was a show because mm-hmm, i mm-hmm. like that a sort serialized of, show. i like that episodic version yeah. versus like if she just sort of popped in in a in a movie right i would feel maybe even shortchanged i'm like no yeah. no, no this this character but should kamala khan have been introduced in a movie and then she gets a show and then she shows back up in the, the marvels. marvels should monica rambeau have gotten her powers in a movie because she was introduced in the first captain mm-hmm, marvel as a little mm-hmm. girl and we see her then she gets her powers and then she's involved in wandavision and then she shows like i don't know and it's tricky because i'm i'm a marvel fan and i'm eating good i liked kate bishop and hawkeye but absolutely people mm. are gonna go see the movie and go i don't know who that is yeah right i got right. excited why is Haley steinfeld in this right. movie <laughs> i think so i think your answer it's not necessarily a should or right like a should situation right i think if your storytelling is strong enough you don't need to dive straight into the backstory of every character right I, yeah like a character should be able to pop up and you immediately are attracted to that character right. for whatever reason, and then you you're interested enough to go back and watch that show. And that's yes, and that's an interesting yes. point because my girlfriend and I were talking about that, and she's like, the movie itself, and then that thing at the end mm-hmm. wasn't enough for me to want to go exactly. Watch. But and uh, that's but, that's the issue. But the flip side is also I know somebody who watched um, WandaVision mm-hmm. like first. Yeah. Like they got Disney Plus. We're not interested in any of the Marvel movies. This yeah, is a yeah, friend yeah. of Chelsea and Keller's. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she was not interested in any of the Marvel movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watched WandaVision. And then she was like, I like these two characters. Went back and did like Endgame. Right. And then Infinity did, War. Did, yeah, yeah. did the opposite order, order. Which broke my brain. Yeah. yeah. And I was yeah. like, You sure don't want to try this order? And she was like, No. 
I'm, you're I got sweating it. bullets. I'm like, like, you're like, just like, <laughs> oh my God, take my Blu-rays. Take my Blu-rays. What you described is also like, it's also kind of ideally how comics like this work. Yeah. Bingo. You know, you, you, right. you read a big cool comic book event that has all the yes. characters and Wolverine's interacting with this character and right. you go, who the hell is this character? Yeah. Right. Laura? Laura Kinney? Yep. X-23? Mm-hmm. Hang on, I gotta go check out I some more of her. Check this out. Yeah. Ideally, right. that's how that works. So, mm, right. so it's a tricky balance, it's, man. It's very tricky and I... I I'm in the boat where I absolutely loved the Marvels Mm -hmm. um, because it did a lot of things for me where I didn't come in expecting, and I don't think I'm doing this for any Marvel franchise at this point because I feel like I'm being set up for failure, like how you're feeling with like the building blocks, right? Right. I'm just trying to go in. You're not expecting Endgame. You're not expecting. No, but not even that. Like, I don't, I don't see it right now as like this is going to be the next step in the franchise Mm -hmm. because. I think we've seen it, and that expectation I think is um, not not really their strong suit right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when I went into this movie, I on it, I'm going to be very honest. I went in believing that the reviews, and I'm just sure. like, oh, this is going to be bad. Sure. Like, oh my god. And then the moment like Elon uh, Iman Vellani came on the screen, yeah. I was just like, oh, she's, she's like, she's doing she's very it very good, mm-hmm. man. And then some of the stuff that was in there, like I'm not hot on on Captain Marvel as in the MCU as a character. Sure. Iman Vellani flipped me on all these characters. I'm like, yeah. I love all these characters. You now. like her in relation to Carol. You I like, like her in I relation like how to Monica. She yeah. The yeah. three characters together, right? And her I'm like and Fury was really cute. Dude, yes, yeah. absolutely. And so I was just like, this is great. And then I started seeing it as more of like the villain, whatever. Like that right. was it. Right. I wanted to see these three characters do anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have a sandwich. Yeah. Like go to the uh, mall. Also, it didn't hurt that they left Intergalactic in the movie and well, it wasn't yeah. just in the trailer. When, it, when yeah, Beastie Boys exactly. started playing, I was like, this I is, like this. this. Is it. <laughs> right? like, you know. And it was in a good scene. They're they were double dutching, like they were yeah. practicing their <laughs> skills, right? Yeah. And so by the end of it, I was like, okay, like clearly Iman Vellani has done her homework because mm. and, and a lot of the a lot of the humor in there felt very Guardians of the Galaxy. And I'm like, she's watching Chris Pratt because she's funny. Like if mm. you watch some of the shit that happens. Like when the bangle gets to the villain lady, I forgot what her name was. <laughs> right? Da- Great time. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then she goes, where did you find this? She's like, my grandma sent it yeah. in the mail. That was Chris Pratt. I was like, Chris That's Pratt has funny. done that That's in funny. the MCU before. I was like, yeah. you've been doing your homework, kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was like, she she's knows finding what movie she's in. her deliveries on point. Mm-hmm. Like, and that, and that flipped the entire movie for me. Because I was like, this is a character piece to show her off. Yeah. To kind of like get you to really be on board with Captain Marvel. Yeah. To get you on board with kind of like this story. And I was like, yes, I wish it was building up to. I got goosebumps when I saw Beast. But then I'm oh, like, that was I, great. Don't, I don't know. But if, it's also Kelsey Grammer. Yeah, exactly. Beast, so exactly. I, don't. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I don't know if I like I, this. I, but I didn't. <laughs> that scene happened. I was like, uh, again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. The Fox X Men. But I was just oh, like, well, let's, and I, let's, love the, I love the Fox X Men. But yeah. let's, let's talk about that for a second <laughs> yeah. because I have very strong feelings yeah. about. I don't want this to result and resolve yeah. with at the end of Secret Wars right. with a merging of universes. Yeah, I don't want that. Just for Marvel Studios right. to go, and now we have Wolverine yeah. and it's Hugh Jackman. Yeah, can I, I be honest that. with you? Yes. I feel like it would just be Kevin Feige going, I worked on all of these movies, so I want to make uh, put them all together. But uh, you might be right. No, I think I don't it, think if, he's if, gonna do it. But I hope if not. It were to. I hope not. And I feel as though if it were to happen, it would be because Marvel Studios basically decides to just not put in the effort Mm -hmm. and for them to go, Mm -hmm. we're just going to absorb the already established thing. Right. We don't have to explain the Mm X-Men. We're just going to absorb what's already been the sort of set design, you you know, the costumes. But my frustration is I want Marvel Studios in the sacred timeline in their own franchise, just like they did with Peter Parker, Mm -hmm. to have their own take on these characters. Mm -hmm. But I think the reason they're introducing the Fox X-Men characters is because they're looking at that movie history and going, you know, we never saw Patrick Stewart in the yellow chair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I know. Let's bring him in and put him in the yellow chair yeah. with a little yeah. We never saw Hugh Jackman in the classic animated right. series. Right, right, right. And it, okay, you're rolling your eyes, but like, that's going to make a lot of money. Oh, I know. Like, you know it will. It, that it, tease it will. at the end of The Wolverine was juicy. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So yeah. I think my hope is, and I think we're on the same page about this, is that they're bringing, they're teasing this <clears throat> to set up Deadpool, but also maybe we will have Hugh Jackman Wolverine mm-hmm. in Secret Wars, but it's going to be the farewell goodbye to those, to that franchise. Mm-hmm. The same mm-hmm. way that Spider-Man No Way Home 
kind of is a farewell goodbye thank you to the Sam Raimi and Mark Webb Spider-Mans. Mm-hmm. It's not like they're bringing them in to be like, and now you guys are going to be in play, right? No, right. it's Tom Holland. Yeah. This is a, a celebration and a goodbye. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's going to happen this with This is fine. But at the same yeah. time, I'm like, Logan already did that. Yeah. No, well, you're right. Kind of. Yes. Kind of. Kind of. Not but to the X-Men, but definitely for exactly. Wolverine. Here's exactly. what I'm Xavier. hoping. Yeah, exactly. We have Loki as the master of time mm. and stories. There is going to be a point. This is where I feel like the MCU is going. Where okay. a singularity happens. The mm. multiverses will die down into to one. one. Oh my God. And it's going to happen where something similar to like these these events that happen where all the multiverses incursions. just die. Yeah. The incursions die and we are left with a core yeah. of like... 10 characters. Right. And it's that's like, it's all like a, the mutants that are all like, the superheroes like, that are alive. Like the Secret Wars comic book from 2015 yes, exactly. where there was the, the survivors and it was kind right. of battle world and right. it was this like mm-hmm. weird mm-hmm. new reality. Exactly. Okay. Like I have a feeling we're going to get to that point because I think what's happening and what people are feeling now is what happened to comic books in the 90s. Mm-hmm. The multiverse kind of cheapens deaths sure. when you realize that there's going to be another version of this character that conveniently pops up at a particular time. Uh-huh. And that sucks because that's why comic books in the 90s were hard to get into Mm -hmm. because there was a thousand different stories and a thousand different branches all happening all at the same time and nothing really felt important. I will will say, though, I don't necessarily feel that Mm. sort of thing Mm -hmm. of like, well, they're just going to bring... Because I don't think they're going to... I think they're smarter than that. They're not going to kill off the sacred timeline version of Doctor Strange and then pull him from another universe right. and then he becomes or, the main character. But here's, 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 seen him before. Here, like, here's what Loki, Augustine's talking Loki about. Loki kept dying over and over. Right. And like, but, but here's what yeah, I think what I Augustine's know. talking about is there's rumors that they're going to bring back RDJ and Scarlett Johansson. Mm. Yeah. Well, and I, I saw that. And I think that, the yeah. entertainment right. reporting are like... I don't think they understand the context, like the comic book context. Right, right, I don't mean right. to be exactly. gatekeeper again, but I feel like they're reporting like, apparently they might come back. Yeah. Right. And comic book fans are like, yeah, for a cameo in Secret Wars, right. but their right. characters are still dead in the sacred mm-hmm. timeline. Right. But you can say that all the live long day, but people are still going to go, so they brought back Iron Man. Yeah, and it's exactly. like, yeah, they did. Like, Technically. So it right. kind of cheapens it a little. Uh, it does. Right, it does. Right. You know, like yeah. it's, it's just... I don't know. I, I think mer- multiversal stuff. I'm glad they're diving into it because yeah. it's a huge it's an part interesting of concept. But you think yeah. they're gonna they're gonna close everything? I think off. there's gonna I think be a singularity. Yes. yes, you're right. Yes, I think they do have to because I think this is a huge experimentation phase mm. for Marvel, and I actually applaud them. Not everything has been the strongest. Mm-hmm. Like there's been some but real downers, they're, some they're, real uppers. But they're trying stuff. But the ups have been high, dude. Guardians three. Yeah. Like, come, yeah. that's one of the greatest MCU <clears throat> movies ever made. Loki. Loki's and incredible. I really like Spider Man No Way Home. Spider Man No Way Home yeah. was incredible. Like, we were well, all I, up and cheering I, for I that. I generally stuff. liked Phase Four yeah. Yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Phase Five for me has been the one that I'm like, this is like the middle part of Multiverse mm-hmm. Saga. Right, right. And right. I'm like, it's sure. just kind of all it's over the place. It's kind of muddy. Yeah. Yeah and, and yeah. Loki, and Loki and Guardians are hard because they're following pre existing things. Right, right, exactly. Whereas you know, the, the, new okay. thing, the new things are like Secret Invasion in Phase yeah. Five. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. That didn't really. That's hit. the other thing, too, is the Marvels doesn't address a single thing from that show. Right. <laughs> I'm like, ca- yeah. no one told Captain Marvel that Talos is dead? That's Bro, weird to me. No. No. Well, I mean, maybe it did, but maybe it happened before. The, because I have to imagine she would have found out about that. I know, that's what I would think too. Because the beginning of this movie, Carol. It's all scrolls. Carol yeah. has been in communication with Fury for mm-hmm. presumably mm-hmm. like a minute. Because yeah. she's, yeah. she, she's maybe in deep space, but Fury's able to call her yeah. Yeah. and be like, we need you to check out this anomaly. And the only yeah. reason I even bring yeah. it up is because yeah. Talos was like a main character yeah. in Captain I know. Marvel. Exactly. I know. Exactly. I know. But then again, after 1995. This bitch left Earth. You know what I'm saying? Carol <laughs> dipped she out. Gone. She dipped. <laughs> she was like she dipped, blocking out she suns. Wasn't, and she like, wasn't yeah. friends with Talos. Fury no. was. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. she, this lady, dipped, and she <laughs> might have ignored a lot of his calls. Like, <laughs> even, even, like, even Until at the beginning the of the movie, she Until was the like, beeper. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, I imagine that a lot of the time she was like, "Fucking Fuck bitch, get guy. out of here." But after uh, Infinity Snap, and you know, after Thanos, right. she's probably like, "I have to take every call yeah, now exactly. because it could be another destiny." Like, I don't know what's going on. It could be as important as whatever I'm doing. Over here, I think, right? the, I think the other thing with Marvel too is they're fighting a little bit of an uphill battle because not totally. all of their projects have been hitting with everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and generally speaking, I feel like for me at least, when I would go into, into a Marvel project, I was always expecting it to be really good. Oh, 100%. Now, sometimes, not with all of them, it depends on the project. Now, I'm going into I'm like, 
I really do hope that this is great. Right. Yeah, a right. little bit less than like, oh, I know this is going to be it. For sure. Civil right. War For was sure. coming out. I was like, this is going to be fucking incredible. Yeah, yeah. of course. And you know, it delivered. Yeah. Going yeah. to see Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum I was like, yeah. I hope it's good. And I hope this right. kind of works. But and Black it, Panther it, and Doctor Strange yeah. and all these. The phase and then there's three surprises movies. like Loki where you're like, they're doing a spinoff show on Loki, yeah. but he died. How's this going to work? Nothing from Loki. Right. Yeah. And then it ends up being like one, one of my favorite one of things in the in the MCU. I think I am. I'm in an ag- I'm in agreement with you, Augustine. Except I do think that when this whole thing resolves, especially because of how the end of Loki happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So remember, Loki. We zoom out of Mobius, Don, and yeah. he's at, he's watching his life, and that timeline originally said branched timeline, mm-hmm. and I have a feeling that branched timeline is maybe very different from the MCU mm-hmm. because remember when Loki showed up to that Don. Don didn't go, oh my God, you're Loki, who mm-hmm. attacked New York. Right, yeah. So like, right. maybe that shit never happened in right, this timeline, right. right? No Thanos, mm-hmm. no Avengers, no maybe Loki. Maybe there's no superheroes at all. It's possible. Yeah. So I'm thinking that at the end of the show, Loki, if God Loki, is, we zoom out and he's watching Don kind of live in that world and have that happiness, and Loki's allowing that branch timeline mm-hmm. to continue... Mm-hmm. I think when this is all said and done, Secret Wars wraps up, we might zoom out and it's going to be Tom Hiddleston and he's going to be like, and now back to re- regular reality or yeah. something like back to normal. And there's going to be like a ton of timelines, including the Sony Spider-Man stuff they're trying to do, you know, the the X-Men 97 mm-hmm. animated world, the Spider-Man freshman year animated, yeah. the various what if, what if realities, yeah. the different movie realities that they don't want to cut off all the way. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, in some, re- in some universe, Wesley Snipes' Blade happened. Mm-hmm. In some universe, Eric Bana Hulk happened. Mm-hmm. But then Loki's going to be looking over the sacred timeline. Yeah. And I think right. that'll be a way, and maybe there will be a mechanism where it's like, oh, we can't really do multiversal travel anymore. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. As a way to cut that off, but to still allow that other stuff to to live. exist right, and to right. live, mm-hmm. and Loki's going to be they, the reason they won't for it. Interact, and right. I, I think right. I think this is the good thing that they wrote about Loki. Yeah, in this show is that they gave us a character that we've known basically since yes. the beginning yeah. of the MCU. We've yes. seen him do a full one eighty. Yeah, full, well, we we don't even know if he's like fully good at this. That's point, true. Right? I mean, like, I think he's like one of the goodest good people yeah. in the entire universe. Yeah, that's like, what we're assuming. <laughs> that's right what we're now. hoping for. Yeah. But he's also the god of mischief. Yeah, right? yeah sure, sure, you know. You, you sure. never know. I'm never gonna put it past Loki to sure. like <laughs> do a little 180 oh, and sh- trick somebody sh- and stab <laughs> Thor real quick when he turns into a snake. Brother. <laughs> Maybe he'll just tune into that reality where Thor stayed a frog. Yeah, and he's right? just like, this is my this favorite. Is, yeah. I love this, this is fun. I know. Right, but I, I think there's a lot that they can play with because yeah. I think it's it's like I said at the end of the uh, after we watch the show, you were able to attach a character, attach yourself to a character who is. A celestial god, now, right? Mm-hmm. But who is controlling? Emotional. But now yeah. you see yeah. him. You saw him as a person turn mm-hmm. into this huge celestial being, and now when things happen in the universe, say, say Xavier wants to talk to Loki. You know, like you can imagine it happening because you're attached to Loki. You right. know what he went through, and right. now Xavier and this whole he's story a, he's happens. A cosmic. Being. It's got weight. It's yes. got weight to it, right? Yeah. Rather yes. than just like random celestials with yep. hammers blowing shit up. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. Yep. You're right. What, what right. do I care about what this do I, guy? Well, yeah. I don't care about Arishim the Judge, yeah. the Celestial. No, I don't care. Yeah. You know, or even when Thor met Eternity, which was right. that shape. It yeah. looked super cool, okay. especially in 3D. It looked really cool. Oh, yeah. It looked really cool in 3D. 3D. Yeah. But that was not necessarily a character. Right. So there's no... But in the in yeah. the comics, he is a character. A little bit. It's and like an important yeah. character. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. Or like Death. Death yes. is a character. Yeah. And that's a harder concept to explain. But now that you have Loki, yeah. who everybody grew up with and, yeah. and, and grow, grows with, right. uh, it, Loki it's a much easier the, concept. The multiversal world tree. Yeah. And when you tell people, oh, he's the world tree. Yeah. It's not just a blank sort of concept. Right. You right. Go, oh, that's Loki. That's I so cool. I saw him yeah. do that. Yeah. And that's yeah. cool, I right? I yeah. it. I seen it. it. I seen you pull somebody's <laughs> jawbone off once. Yeah. I seen it. <laughs> so, but I'm also in agreement with Adam is in that my biggest criticism, my biggest issue with the state of this franchise right now mm-hmm. is that things are taking too long to pay off. Mm-hmm. I also mm-hmm. really enjoyed mm-hmm. the Marvels, mm-hmm. and I think part of the reason I enjoyed it because I was like, thank you. I've been waiting to see Monica confront Carol. Mm, I see. And I, I see. liked the reasoning. Yeah. Why, Carol, why didn't you come back they to Earth? They did a good job with I that, like that. that whole. Yeah. The, the same way that like the reasoning for Peter Quill never to return to Earth is too hard. That's where his mom died. Good enough reason for me. You know, mm-hmm. once he's in space and has a spaceship, why didn't he just come back to good enough reason for me, dude? Mm-hmm. Emotionally couldn't handle it. Carol was too perfect, mm-hmm. had that pressure. Could and I'm like, good enough for me. I also wanted the payoff of Kamala meeting Carol. Great. I'm I've been waiting for it since the Ms. Marvel show, which was 2022, 2021. Last year. 
It was last year. Mm-hmm. So a year. I think so, or yeah. was, it was It was 2022. 2022. Yes. 2022. But WandaVision yes. 2021. Yes. You know, and the other thing about WandaVision is Monica had that tease. I brought this up before. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know a guy. The guy who could build this vehicle to punch into this this uh, witch hex. Yeah. And I when it wasn't we saw Reed that, Richards. <laughs> so, but it could be. Yeah. That that's what I'm saying. Is it like it's now been two years and even that little thing hasn't been paid off? Right. Pay it off. Yeah. Set up a thing that you know yeah. you're going to pay off in the next project or two, not four years, five years from yeah. now. The celestial you know? sticking out of the ocean. The like right. not <clears throat> every seed that they plant. No, seriously, <laughs> yeah. and not every seed that they plant is going to be like when Steve Rogers moved Mjolnir. Right. Mm-hmm. We waited four years for that payoff. Right. Mm-hmm. Worth it mm-hmm. yeah because that's what a moment and it's a lot also, happened yes characters. and it's also like not the most important thing to steve <clears throat> right right mm-hmm. it's but it was like what a it was, it, payoff. It, it it was a fan been, payoff yeah it could have been a throwaway moment yeah. in that movie totally yeah. yeah but it didn't end up being no right? yeah like that they saved important. it for the perfect yeah. moment but yeah. you introduce like a judge sticking out of the indian ocean or whatever right. like bro how that's many projects has it been <laughs> yeah you gotta pay that off it's not a small thing yeah and i think that's i think that was part of the gamble and i'm sure they probably thought that that was going to be something that they'll eventually have to deal with when they decided that each phase was not going to end with an Avengers movie. Yeah, sure. And the multiverse saga is going to be three phases Sure. that then, sure. you know, sort of um, culminate, culminate in, the, yeah. in an Avengers yeah. two-parter. Makes sense. You know? Makes sense. So it's like, I think now with phase four, they sprinkled in a lot of things, which is not too dissimilar from phase one. I right. mean, the difference is with phase one, the universe was much smaller. Exactly. And the payoff was quicker. Exactly. And I want to talk about that too, because yes, you're right. A hundred percent right. And I think people really forget about the fact that when we were back at phase one, we didn't know where the fuck this was going. No, totally. not Nobody at all. knew. Totally we didn't, didn't know. We didn't know where it was going to go in the next movie. Right. Like and, they didn't even know. They didn't know Thanos was going to pay no, off that, like he I'm, did. I want to bring that stuff up because right. because it was they did the Avengers movie. It was originally to be Red Skull and Loki. Right. Mm. But then I think it was Whedon who saw ju- just the Thor movie and yeah. went, "I think it can just be Hiddleston yeah. as Loki." He was right. Yep. And it was also him who was like, I'm going to write in a Thanos mid-credits tease just in, in this. Case. Yeah. That was not Marvel Studios' idea. Yeah, yeah. So the, And then, you know, the Infinity yeah. War stuff, I, I, I talked about this earlier today, I think on New Rockstars, I think it was Koi Jandro who brought it up. Koi was like, uh, James Gunn wrote all the Infinity Stone mythology. Yeah, the backstory. Yeah. For, for, for um, you know, what's his in name? Guardian. The collector. In like 90 minutes to or something. To explain, he cranked it out and then that ended up being like the basis for the, yeah. whole, the whole fucking franchise, thing. Yeah. right? Yeah, and exactly. And so, so when you when you look at Marvel making the movies the way they did, you kind of can't blame them right. for just trying to sort of wing it. Yep. But then the issue they is... Chicken wing it a little it bit. was the greatest wing it in the fucking world. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. issue is that Phase 4 but and think, 5 But look who feels, did it though. They're directors. Right. They're writer for sure. directors. For yeah. sure. But... You know, yeah, and and exactly, and it's like, do you have right now? Who would you say are the sort of creative um, people that are working at Marvel that are probably shepherding a lot of this stuff? I I couldn't say. And For maybe, example, it was Gun, like James, but, and he's Gunn, out, but he's out now, and he kind of wrapped up his story. Yeah. For Russo's. example, it's like it's, but the Russos are also kind of out. Yeah, now, yeah, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. Russos like, are in downtown it? LA opening <laughs> yeah, that brewery. Open a brewery. Who you need to who, go to? Who is it currently? I don't. Right I'm, now, I'm, I feel like I'm, it's just Marvel Parliament. Right, and I'm hoping yeah. like Sam Raimi comes back, but like I, he's he's not somebody who I think is sort yeah. of like in you know the machine. in the right, machine. Right, right. I hope Ryan Coogler gets to come back, but right. he's not somebody in the machine. So it's probably mm-hmm. right now. Destin, Where's Destin Daniel Cretton doing? It's him coming from Shang Chi, and now he's going to direct Avengers: Kang Dynasty. One day later. And then we don't know who's directing Secret Avengers Wars. Secret Wars. Yeah. But mm-hmm. like, is it just Destin Daniel Jeff, Cretton? Jeff like, Loveness is not writing it anymore, Apparently I don't think. not. Yeah, apparently yeah. he's not doing Kang Dynasty. But now, so maybe it might, my, the answer might be Michael Waldron, who wrote on Loki and this, mm-hmm. is now writing Avengers stuff, which makes you think, okay, Loki might be involved. Loki mm-hmm. might be connected. The directors who directed on Moon Knight. Mm-hmm. And Loki. And Loki. And, and are now, now they're, doing Daredevil Now they're moving to again. Daredevil. So that mm-hmm. feels like they kind of got the TV shows locked down yeah. and they're pitching themselves to maybe direct Secret, Secret Wars. Wars. Like they yeah. want to be in it. So are they really shepherding the creative, you know, here's what we think the multiverse saga should be. Mm-hmm. Here's what we think Kang should be. I don't know. Yeah. They directed episodes of Loki. Yeah. yeah. I think they wrote stuff too for I don't know but uh, I'm not sure if they wrote but they directed definitely but anyway I think Marvel does need to um, I'm sure that they have those people in house but it just doesn't feel like they are as present or maybe mm-hmm. that they're as active I don't know maybe because it's taking too long yeah. to I don't know I don't know uh, yeah and, and you know uh, yeah it's and it's really weird too because I, I was thinking about this like a week ago and I was mm-hmm. trying to think like who are the I was thinking about that very same thing of like who have been the directors at Marvel mm-hmm. who have really been involved with like crafting mm-hmm. Doesn't even necessarily have to be 
like the entire universe, but really big pockets of the universe. Right. I immediately think of James Gunn. Right. I immediately think of John Favreau. Right. And I immediately think of the Russos because they directed mm-hmm. so many movies. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I feel like maybe that's part of what is kind of missing. Yeah. Is that they don't and, have and, a, a director or a set of directors right. who are maybe a little bit more hands on. And definitely Kugler for the Wakanda side of the universe. Absolutely. But again, yeah. right Without now it's question. like, oh, but it's like there's no... There's no movement on a Wakanda 3. Right. And I yeah. haven't seen movement on the Wakanda spinoff TV show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And again... What's and, happening with Namor? Right, right. So, yeah, exactly. I can definitely point to the directors who've sort of shaped that. Or YTT, Taika, with the Thor mm-hmm. for 3 and 4. When he I got heard, on there for Ragnarok... I heard, a, I heard a thing that said if there is a Thor 5, he's not involved in it. Well, what had happened was he was asked about it and... <laughs> He goes, I don't know when they're doing it, yeah. but I'm booked for five or six years. I see. Yeah. yeah. He's and got he a goes, Star Wars movie he's been writing for like 16 yeah. years yeah, yeah, already. Yeah. And he <laughs> goes, so if they want to do it within five or six, I, I can't, can't do, do it. it. Yeah. But when he was promoting four, he said, I want to come back if it's me and Hemsworth again, because they're buddies. But I imagine maybe the mixed reception to... Love and Thunder mm-hmm. has made Taika go. I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah, it's true. I could, are, I could easily. Those fans are dicks. He's a dick. I don't want to do that. He's a dick. <laughs> Why am I going to do that? That's stupid. But I feel like you know the different the the space between James Gunn's Guardians two and three mm-hmm. was like six or something. Like they paused. Yeah, it was, they were like it was they, a hot minute. It was a hot minute. Plus they he got waited fired. For him. Then he went to DC. And That's made what some I'm movies. saying. They waited yeah. for him to come yeah. back. So I'm I'm hopeful in that if Marvel has an idea for the direction creatively of like the Thor characters. And they pitch it to Hemsworth and Taika, and they go, would you guys want to do, this is our idea. Would you guys want to do this idea? And if it's a good idea, and Taika and Hemsworth are like, yeah, then they should do it. And they can mm-hmm. wait mm-hmm. five or six. I don't need mm-hmm. a Thor movie no. now. We don't need another in Thor the movie interim. anytime soon. Yeah. yeah, he's had four. Yeah, yeah maybe. He's had maybe, the most sequels out of any character, I Maybe think. they will know if Thor is or isn't going to appear in those Avengers movies. Mm-hmm. And if so, what's going to happen to him? Yeah. So it's mm-hmm. like, what's the aftermath? And then maybe bring that to Taika and Hemsworth. Like, well, what, Here's what, the aftermath. And maybe the one, but maybe not. Either yeah. way, yeah. You know, I definitely don't need another Thor film in my life. No. But I do want to see Hercules. Mm-hmm. I want right. to see that character, and and he was set to try to go down after Thor. Mm-hmm. He was trying to set to oh, go yeah. after him. He's gonna hunt him. So I'm like, is that gonna be picked up in an Avengers film? Right. You know, I would love to see him and his daughter, Thor and his daughter. I'd love to see Heimdall and Jane Foster and the other Asgardians. Resurrected, or, resurrected, or what yeah. are we doing? I like, still think Hulk is the greatest untapped potential that they have. I agree, for dude. The MCU, and now they have the rights fully, fully back, right? I don't know. I, do I they? Don't know. I think they do. Ooh. I think they, or I think that they have it, or had it as soon as they started rolling cameras on Cap, which is why there's a bunch of Hulk characters in Captain America: Brave New World. Oh, because okay. like mm. Liv Tyler's in it. Uh huh. Tim Roth is in it. But why as not Abomination. Just make a Hulk movie? Maybe I mean that's a great question. <laughs> that is a good question. I mean, but that's what, no, it's, that's, it's, that's, it's that's true. The reason I'd be like, well, just do the whole thing. It's true, but maybe it's a matter of like the last the Thor three movie was a team up between Thor Google. and Hulk. I'm going to Google this real. You're quick. You're going to Google. You yeah. see if they have the right. Give it to Google. Yeah. You know, and the question there was, why not just do a Planet Hulk movie? They couldn't. They, could. they legally yeah, couldn't. Yeah, yeah. But they looked at Hulk and they went, where can we, you know, and how can we help both of the characters? Mm. And it, it benefited both, I think. Right. So maybe they're looking at Sam Wilson Cap. And going, if he has to go, because originally the movie was called New World Order, yeah. and they changed that. They changed that name. But in the comic books, a character who's been involved with something like that, story-wise, was the leader, Samuel Stearns. Mm-hmm. So maybe they looked at Cap's rogues gallery, the villains, and they went, well, we're already using MODOK for Ant-Man, and he's really goofy. We can't, we like, there's no Captain America villains mm-hmm. left, and Red Skull is not a bad guy anymore. He's a cosmic deity yeah. protecting the Soul Stone. Yeah. So maybe they looked at Hulk villains and went, we can bring back Tim Blake Nelson as the leader. Mm-hmm. We can bring back Tim Roth as the Abomination, and we can have Thunderbolts and Red Hulk in this, right. and he deals with Sam Wilson Cap, because mm-hmm. that's, oh no, uh, William Hurt died. Ah, we'll recast him. He's Harrison, Harrison Ford. Ford. <laughs> But maybe they're looking at the story potential and going, we can kind of hype up and build up some Cap stuff, yeah, including General Ross, and then go into and tease, well, at the end of this, he's going to be Red Hulk, mm-hmm. and go into the Thunderbolts movie and go into a Hulk spinoff movie that then also maybe brings in Jennifer Walters' right. She-Hulk. So yeah. valid question, but I'm thinking maybe they're just using the opportunity to be like, let's hype up right. Cap stuff, <clears throat> and then also, because remember, I too- I mean, you could also just make a She-Hulk movie and call it the I know, Hulks, dude. I know. And it's both. I'd love that. Do they? This article- <gasps> Released in on June fifteenth, twenty twenty three. Yeah, mm-hmm. so just a couple months ago. Yeah, that's when it went when it re- completely reverted. Over. They got oh, it, baby. Wow. So it's they new. got it, baby. It's it's fresh. Yeah. yeah, I don't think they could really bank on making 
those kind of big Hulk yeah. movies in that short of amount of time. No. So I'm now fingers crossed yeah, for this man. World War Hulk. <laughs> I think like, so. Uh, Listen, they didn't kill make, off Mark Ruffalo. They no, did not. They he has a son now. Of yeah. yes. They have to pay <laughs> that off. Yes, yeah. yes, they um, can do that. So I also think Marvel was really sneaky, and I think they literally rolled cameras on Charlie Cox's Daredevil as soon mm-hmm. as they got like the rights back that the oh, Netflix yeah. Daredevil like went away or mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. and when they started filming Spider-Man I think and mm-hmm. then immediately started being like what are, where else where else where else we let's, love yeah. this man let's, let's, put let's him, do let's more let's put him in She-Hulk yeah. let's give him the show he's yeah. gonna be an Echo yeah that's right yeah, yeah. Echo then the show yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. oh man yeah. Excited. so I mean I, I, I know that I said that you know Phase 5 is kind of yeah. a hit and miss for me I'm not I'm still excited for what the multiverse saga ends up being. Sure. Mm-hmm. And I know that I'm going to be excited for whatever the next saga is. And yeah. I will continue to be until I really feel like it's fallen apart. Yeah. yeah. But I definitely do think that there's a lot of exaggeration online of like, oh, and, yeah. and people make fun of it all the time. Oh, this movie came out, more MCU's dead. This movie came out, MCU's <laughs> back, MCU's dead yeah. again. It's back, it's dead, it's yeah. back, it's dead. And it's like, Jesus Christ. It's crazy. I, I, don't, I don't listen to the mob anymore. I'm glad I really kind of stopped using Twitter completely because yeah. yeah. my life has been so much better. <laughs> Sorry to, that's that that also has my most followers. So yeah. I apologize to all the people on Twitter. No, all your followers are like, we get it, dude. Yeah, we get I know. It. I, and I think people on Twitter get it, right? <laughs> it's just like, it's not the, the platform to be on anymore. Yeah. But it's, it's been the Titanic for a, 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 for yeah. a while. For a while. For it hasn't split while. in half yet, but I it's ab- getting there. I abandoned it's ship. Yeah, it's I cracking. Was, I definitely pushed over some women and children <laughs> yeah. to dive on the escape. <laughs> Billy Zane the hell out yeah. of there. I'm <laughs> gone. Head first into the safety boat thing. Oh, my God. Um, Holding on to Instagram like, please, yeah. Yeah. please, yeah. please God. my daughter. Oh, Guys, please, God. Don't, don't hurt my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think it's, um, I don't know. I think the state of the MCU is overall good. Uh, yeah. I'm still excited for this, even though... I'm trying to let go of of the past, basically, and mm. say that was a cherished part of my cinematic like mm-hmm. experience. But now we're on to different things, and yeah. I'm and and like with the Marvels, right? I tried to experience it for what this movie was, not mm-hmm. particularly what it could be building up in, to. into the larger picture. Into the larger yeah. picture, and that really helped me see the characters and what they were doing with the character, it reminded me of like a, a Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Like yeah. all of that humor would have fit exactly into like a Guardians. And we've seen similar goofy type humor that had mm-hmm. people rolling in the aisles mm-hmm. when stuff like this happened. So mm-hmm. I'm just like, cool, I see what you're doing. Yeah. I like it. I yeah. want to see more of it. And yeah. what uh, I don't know what the fuck's going I, on I, in the future. So <laughs> I also, you know? as corny as it was, I was also like very excited about beast showing up a full yeah. cg yeah. blue furry yeah. guy because i'm like that's cool uh-huh. kelsey Grammer, i don't like him but he's got a great voice i don't for beast. yeah i don't i, he, I it's look, hard to deny i don't like any of the fox yeah. movies, honestly, <laughs> but, honestly but i don't think he's gonna be the beast forever that's right why, that's exactly. why i'm like cool exactly. this is cool you know it's, it's it took me until logan to like hugh jackman as wolverine <laughs> so, like, don't tell nobody he's too tall he's too tall don't tell nobody <laughs> he's too tall i did like deadpool from the first movie though he's, oh yeah from yeah, the, yeah yeah from, from that first deadpool yeah. movie not the X Men yeah. Origins Wolverine yeah, right, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. from not the, the yeah. Yeah. not the stage not the stage not the stage yes, space guy you, not the yeah. Baraka looking yeah. dude but, uh, I, I, yeah. I think I still I don't think I've changed my stance on this but I still do think that Marvel should just make less things Oh, oh, I yeah. agree. No, I and agree. dude, and I that's agree. the other good news, bad news about the strike, yeah. Yeah. about the delays, stuff being delayed. about COVID shifting stuff mm. around, and about the mixed-ish reception about various Marvel mm. projects over the past few years. Yeah. One next movie year, coming out next one year. One movie. One movie. I, think I, I don't know how many shows, though, because we've got Echo, and I don't know what other shows. Probably Daredevil Born Again, probably Agatha, oh, Covenant of Chaos. Right, yeah. right, right. So there might be more shows than movies, maybe, which like, maybe. if that's making up for maybe. it, then that's Listen. fine. I I think they got too excited about having this brand new toy. For sure, yeah. Disney Plus. They were is like, a hell "Oh my of a god, toy. we have yeah. our service. We can and we blow have, our load, and we have the greatest thing ever, the yeah. MCU, right? Yeah. So let's. How could it fail, right? Right. They diluted their product a little bit. There's there's some dilution going on, and and as we um, saw with Loki, a movie style approach isn't always going to be the best thing for yeah. a TV right, series. Right, 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 exactly. Loki was two seasons. I'm talking to Bob by your directly. There you go. Bob. I'll cancel that shit immediately <laughs> yeah. if these shows. Don't live up to the what what they were, yeah. and so and even yeah. if they do, we might and then just pick it up again exactly. in a couple yeah. months, and then I'll just pay for it or for I a just, month, or just want it all, and I'll just keep taking your screeners, and I'll just buy the Blu-rays. <laughs> <laughs> Give me more Blu-rays. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, no, but I think um, I don't know. It's it's kind of in a weird spot, and this next year is going to be really telling for yeah. what whatever direction we're going to go in. I agree. Yeah. I, I we'll think see. I'm in agreement with both of you guys. Yeah. I'm still excited about stuff, but it has been a weird time, and I'm hoping that they can learn. 
Here's always the thing I think about. When people go, oh, Marvel effed up. I hope they learn from this. Look at the shift from Thor 2 to Thor 3. Mm-hmm. I know. Right, right. They learned right. a lesson. They learned with a Thor. lesson, yeah. Thor 2 came out and they went, this didn't hit, uh-huh. and so they took and a big swing. In four years, they flipped it around. They, they took a big around. swing. Yeah. So yeah. I always look at that, and I we go, but then- from our failures. But then even that makes me go back to Avengers Endgame, and I go, but they didn't abandon the failure. Right. They embraced it. They now learned. we're going to travel back in time mm-hmm. to 2013 Asgard, just so that we can have uh, Rene Russo given a, one good scene yeah. With, yeah. <laughs> with her son yeah. character, mm-hmm. and that was great. So even the movies and projects that we don't love or even dislike, mm-hmm. I'm talking even Secret Invasion- I still think there's a potential to revisit some of that stuff mm-hmm. and enhance it, make it better, yeah. improve upon it yeah. retroactively. Oh, actually, this is what it was yeah. from this angle. Yeah. That's what comic books I, have been I doing agree. forever. Man. I agree. I think I think we're going to see a lot of cool stuff in the future. Yeah. It's not over yet. Yeah. I think no. we still got a lot of stuff to Marvel go Marvel Studios, uh, those we'll projects end. are going to end Maybe when the planet implodes. They have a land (laughs) at Disneyland. They're fine. (laughs) They're fine. They're fine. They have a whole campus. $26 billion later, they're fine. They're building more roller coasters based on them. They're fine. Yeah, Yeah, they're they're going to be be just fine. (laughs) Uh, That's going to wrap it up for us. Uh, I mean, it's I enjoy... Just diving into these things because it's fun to just get everyone's perspective on I it. I missed it, y'all. Yeah. That was, yeah. This is fun. Yeah. Do it again next week? Yeah. Let's do it. Same bad time, same Fuck bad channel. Yeah. What? What? You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> uh, of course, you can check out our reactions for Loki, and we're going to be releasing stuff for Ahsoka and all the other stuff that we missed since the strike. Go watch Barbie, y'all. Go watch Barbie. Barbie's <laughs> great. Oppenheimer's <laughs> coming out, too. Go watch that. Go watch our uh, Oppenheimer. Buy everything on physical media. Support physical media yep. for the love of God, because yep. the quality is much better than on streaming. Thank You'll you be very happier. Much. You'll be happier, yeah. I promise. Uh, check out all the uncut reactions. Check out everything on the main channel as well. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye. Bye. Bye.